Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. In a previous video, we found the eigenvalues of A for this exam question. So the next thing to do is pop B. So we're going to find the eigenvectors first and then we'll normalize them. That just means make sure that their length is one. So let's make a start. So last time we found these three eigenvalues for the matrix A and they are two, two minus root two and two plus root two. And at the top here, we've just got a reminder what it means to say we're looking for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So the lambdas represent the eigenvalues and the vector x represents the eigenvectors. So what we're looking at here is writing down for each of the lambdas the matrix A minus lambda i, multiplying that by x and putting that equal to the zero vector. So it means that we're taking away the lambda from each of the elements on the main diagonal. So if you look at the matrix A, where we've got the ones and zeros, each time those will stay as they are, but we're going to be subtracting the lambda from the main diagonal. So let's make a start with lambda one, which is two. So writing down a minus lambda i times x. Well, when we subtract two from two, we just get zero. So along the main diagonal, we're going to get zero in this case, and all the other numbers stay as they are in the matrix A. So that's a straightforward matrix that we get. And the vector x represents x, y, z. And then you could either write 0, 0, 0, or you could just write the zero vector like that, whichever you want to write. And then we simply multiply out each line. So if we look at the top line of the matrix, the first row, multiplying that by the column vector x, y, z, we get zero times x, one times y, zero times z, and that equals zero. So all we're left with there is y is equal to zero. Looking at the second row, we multiply one, zero, one by x, y, z, so that gives us at x plus z is equal to zero. And looking at the last row, that will again give us y equals zero, which we already knew. So we can now write down an eigenvector. Notice I say an eigenvector and not the eigenvector. So there are loads of possibilities for the eigenvector, well, an infinite number. It's a vector, so I'm underlining it to show that it is a vector. And the one thing that we know for sure is that y is zero. So I've put the y in. And then you can choose a value for either x or z and then write down either z or x afterwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose x being equal to one. So if I choose x as one, then because x plus z is zero, then z must be negative one. So that is an eigenvector, so that we know that if we multiply the matrix A by that vector, that would give us two times that vector because this, vec this, uh, this is an eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 2. Now, we've been asked to normalize these eigenvectors, so that means we need to find the size of x1 and then divide by it. So what we're going to do now is to write down the magnitude of the vector x1. So we need to it's a bit like um, Pythagoras in three dimensions. And if we do this, we will get root two. As usual, we would leave this in third form. So now we can write down the unit eigenvector or the normalized eigenvector. So what I always do is when I've got a unit vector, to show that it's a unit vector, I put a little hat on it. So we are dividing one by root two and minus one by root two. So we have got one over root two, zero, 
and minus 1 over root 2. You could rationalise these if you like and write root 2 over 2. Equally, you could have minus 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2. But those are the only two answers you could have for your unit eigenvector. Other than if you've decided to write root 2 over 2 instead of 1 over root 2. The beauty of a question like this is that it's really easy to check. All we need to do is multiply the matrix by the eigenvector and we should get the same as multiplying the eigenvalue by the eigenvector. So if you don't have much time in the exam to do this, then just obviously don't do the checking. But while you're learning about this, a good idea to check it to see what's going on. So let's have a go at uh, writing down the check. So we're working out the product of our first eigenvector when multiplied by the matrix A. So let's write that down. So the matrix is 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. And the eigenvector 1 over root 2, 0, minus 1 over root 2. So it's fairly straightforward to do because there's so many zeros here. All we're going to get when we multiply the first row of the matrix by this column vector, the eigenvector, is 2 over root 2. And then, of course, we're going to get 0 when we multiply 1 by 1 over root 2, 2 by nothing, and 1 by minus 1 over root 2. And then multiplying the last row of the matrix by the eigenvector will give us minus 2 over root 2. And remember we're trying to show that a times the eigenvector is lambda times the eigenvector and our lambda is 2, so let's take a 2 outside the bracket here. Oops, that other one's getting in the way, isn't it? And so that's going to be dividing by 2, 1 over root 2, 0 minus 1 over root 2, which is equal to 2 times x1 or lambda 1 times x1. So we've done it. So the next thing to do is to work out what happens for our second eigenvalue. So this time the eigenvalue we're looking at is 2 minus root 2. So we're subtracting 2 minus root 2 from each of the elements on the main diagonal. So it's 2 minus 2 minus root 2. So we end up with each of those being root 2. So let's put those in first. So we've got root 2, root 2, root 2. And nothing else in A changes. So we've got 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So that's the A minus lambda I. And that needs to multiply x, y, z. And that's equal to the zero vector. So multiplying row by row, the first row gives us two, no, root 2 x plus y is zero. Next row gives us that x plus root 2 y plus z is zero. And finally, y plus root 2 z is equal to zero. So we could choose to give x, y, or z a value. Um, now I think because in the first and third equations there we've got a y, I think I'm going to choose y as 1. I think that would make life easier, wouldn't it? So let's write down um, x2, so our second eigenvector. And I'm choosing the middle one, first of all. Remember here, you have completely free choice. You can choose x, y, or z to be anything, but you really want to just make life easy for yourself. So let's see what happens. If y is 1, looking at the first equation, root 2 times x is going to be negative 1. So the x is going to be negative 1 over root 2, or root 2 over 2. And similarly, the last equation is going to give us the same sort of thing for z, isn't it? So root 2z will be minus 1. So z will be minus 1 over root 2. So I might have been better off, actually, 
choosing y as negative 1, might not I? Well, I could change it, couldn't I? I could just change all the signs. It's usually better to have fewer, sign, fewer negative than positive signs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the first one positive, next one negative, next one positive. So you can only do that if you change them all. So it's as though I had chosen y to be negative 1, and then x works out as 1 over root 2, and so does z. I'm happier with that, I think. Um, it might actually also be easier not to have fractions in it. So what you might like to do is say, well, actually, x2 might be easier to work with if we multiply each of those numbers by root 2 so that the x will be 1 and then we'll have minus root 2 and then the z would be 1. So in fact what I'm saying is maybe I would have been better off saying let's choose x equal to 1 or y equal to negative two, root 2. But it doesn't actually matter because when you do the next part you all end up with the right answer, hopefully. <laughs> So what you need to do now is just find the magnitude of that, which is a lot easier to do when you haven't got fractions to mess about with. So the magnitude of x2 is equal to the square root of 1, well, 1 squared plus root 2 squared plus 1. Again, it's 1 squared, but we know that's going to be 1. So that's root 4, which is simply 2. So what we need to do is divide each of the elements in x2 by 2. So our unit eigenvector will be a half minus root 2 over 2 or minus 1 over root 2 and a half. Or you could have the opposite signs there. So now we ought to check that. So what we're doing is we're multiplying the matrix A by the eigenvector. So I think I'm going to take the half outside actually from this is coming out from the eigenvector so we haven't got such uh, difficult things to multiply by. So this is just going to be the matrix A. So that's as before. And I've taken the half out from the eigenvector. So now we've just got 1 minus root 2 and 1. It'll be easier to think about the multiplying if we've taken that right outside to start with. So then we've got 2 times 1, then minus root 2, so just 2 minus root 2. And then we've got 2 minus 2 root 2. And finally 2 minus root 2 again. And now we've got to take the half inside. So we've got 2 minus root 2 over 2. And then I'm going to write this as 2 minus, no, as 2 root 2 minus 2 over minus 2. And 2 minus root 2 over 2. So the x and y are straightforward, aren't they? So 2 minus root 2 over 2. And I'm going to take a factor of root 2 outside here. You'll see why in a moment, hopefully. So the minus 2 has come from the denominator. Dividing through by root 2, then I get 2 minus root 2 there. And this is the same as before, 2 minus root 2 all over 2. That was all over as well. Right, OK. So I've done this because I'm trying to show that a times the eigenvector is lambda times the eigenvector. So the lambda was 2 minus root 2. So that's why I took the 2 minus root 2 outside bracket just now. And you should be able to see that that is equal to our vector, our normalised eigenvector, x2. OK, so now we want to look at the final eigenvalue. 
Right, so this time we're taking 2 plus root 2 away from 2 for working out the, uh, the elements on the main diagonal. So we're going to get minus root 2 for each of those. So let's put those in first. And then the rest of A as it was, so 1s and zeros. And multiplying that gives us the zero vector. So multiplying out row by row, we get minus root 2 x plus y is zero. Minus root 2 y plus, oops, I forgot the x. x minus root 2 y plus z is zero. And y minus root 2 z is zero. So for our final eigenvector, we have, what shall we choose this time? Um, as usual, trying to avoid fractions. Well, actually, if we chose y to be 2, let's just write that down before I forget, then root 2x would be 2. So x will be 2 over root 2, which of course is root 2 and z would be the same. Yeah, I like that. Right, okay, so we're going with that. So root 2, 2, root 2. And of course, the other equation, you could check that out. Um, root 2 minus 2 root 2 plus root 2 works out as 0 as well. So that's all good. Excellent. So we're ready to find the magnitude of that vector because we want to normalize it. Uh, nice whole numbers. So we're square rooting. 2 plus 4 plus 2, so root 8. So simplifying that, we get 2 root 2. So the normalized unit eigenvector is all positive numbers, that's nice. Or you could have all negative numbers if you uh, prefer. So we're dividing root 2 by 2 root 2, so that's a half. And then dividing 2 by 2 root 2, so that's 1 over root 2, or root 2 over 2, and then a half. Oops, that could go down a bit lower, couldn't it? Right, so I think this time I'm going to leave you to check the last one. So you're going to multiply the matrix by that by this eigenvector and make sure that that comes out to be 2 plus root 2 times this eigenvector. It will work. Right, okay, so let's just write down a summary of what we found. And all we need to do now is part C of the question, which will be in the next video.